Let's start the exposition from um, rewards. Rewards. Yes. Hebrews 6, chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. Hebrews 6, 10. I want everybody to open it. <coughs> Hebrews 6, 10. Are we there? We are waiting for you. Let's read together. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you are shown toward his name, and that you minister to the saint and do ministers. Let's take it again. For God is not unrighteous to, and labor of love, which you have showed toward his name, in that you have ministered to the same and do minister. First Corinthians 15, 58. Before we start, let's read it to First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. First Corinthians 15, 58. Are, are we there? Everybody, First Corinthians, where is your Bible? Go and bring your Bible. First Corinthians 15, 58. Oh yeah, one go. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abandoned in the work of the law, for as much as you know that your labor in the, is not in, the, in the law. Let's take it again. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abandoned in the work of the law, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the law. Now, what is your take on this? These two scriptures help my life. I told you one time ago that everybody got enlisted in this work. God gave them unseen appointment letter. Everybody. That God is using one way or the other as unseen appointment letter. And part of the appointment letter can be seen here. Number one, God is not unjust. God is not unrighteous. So, when as a child of God, you are laboring, you are working, and you don't see results, always have this at the back of your mind as his minister. God is not unjust. Or, God is not unrighteous. Another one says, God is not a man. That he should lie. So it is the nature of man to lie. It is the nature of God never to lie. He said, I will never lie unto David. Number two, whatever you are doing for God, God is not forgetful. Tell somebody, God is not forgetful. One thing about man. Is that man, including me and you, can be forgetful. People have promised you things, you have promised people things, and you are not wicked, but it just escaped your mind. Is anybody in that area? Because you are still man. Don't worry. In two months' time, when I collect my salary, I will assist you. Then before two months comes, you already have a lot of... Uh, Expenses. You don't even remember that I promise. Is anybody here like that? Or people have promised you. I you know their promise. I know. I know. No, I know. I know. Pastor Larry cannot cannot lie. But you are forgetting that Pastor Larry is a man. <laughs> You are not working. If you are not doing anything, because the only thing Bible says that God will not forget is what? And now maybe let me let's look at the exposition of everywhere. It's not just your labor. It must be labor that is done in love. So 
every labor a minister is doing in the kingdom that is not coming out of love, everyone will not remember it. Minister, look at me very well. Whatever you are now are doing out of bitterness, pride, anger, jealousy, to show off, God will not remember. I didn't say that. He said, he said God is not un unjust. God will not for is not unrighteous and will not forget your labor of love. So the labors God will not forget must be done out of love. Now, love for all. Number one, the labors God will not forget of a minister. Is the labor done with the love of God, love of his kingdom, love of his people? I might talk to somebody here this morning. <clears throat> Every labor that you are sure that God will not forget must be born out of love. And that love must be the love of God, the love for his kingdom, not for, love for the domination, love for the kingdom, and the love for his people. Because he said that, what to administer to the saints. The Bible says in the book of Galatians, let us, good, let us do good to all men. But he now put a comma. He said, especially they that are for the household of faith. So, even though we are supposed to be good to everybody, but God remember more what to do for the saints. Everyone that is bought by the blood of Jesus Christ around you that is born again, see them as part of your parishioner. Be kind. God said it's not unrighteous. It's not forgetful. So, anytime you do know you have done something for God out of love, don't be looking at the hand of man. Hello, because people that you have done it for can be unrighteous and can be forgetful. So anything you are doing in the kingdom, stop looking at the hand of the pastors. Stop looking at the hand of the other people that I, should, I help them during their own time. During my own time, they should help me. In the kingdom, it's not like that because man can be unrighteous, man can be forgetful. They now said, what is that labor that will be rewarded? It is the one that you do with steadfastness. That, you know what they call Takuti Jesus? That this is my last bus stop. He said, unmovable. Am I the one that said that? Is that what they call Takuti Jesus? No way I'm going again. Because a lot of things is corrupting our labors. A lot of things are corrupting our labor. You labor in love, and suddenly you are tired, and instead of complaining, so you are shifting. But God said that labor must be the one you are doing without shifting. He said, unmovable, unmovable. Don't shift. Don't shift your cause. Don't don't be distracted. If if the reward is getting delayed, stay there. Remain unmovable. If the promise is not coming the way it's supposed to come, it's okay. Why in trickles? In trickles. Stay there. The God of the dew is the God of the rain. I'm not talking to somebody here. Eh? Because God will test you. Some of those rewards may be coming as, as in dues first. So even that cannot appreciate God for the dew will not appreciate God for the rain. And I always tell you when you see something that you didn't labor God, God just show you a favor very small favor know that God is already around thank God for that Those are, and this and, and so what what is this you get some people you know, some ministers a gift they open in your presence you mean this is all you can do you hear me it's dangerous so number one thing I told you today is don't ever forget it it doesn't matter what is happening around you, inflation and coal. God is not unrighteous. Number two, God does not forget. Number three, he does not forget the labor that is done out of love. And that love must be love for God, love for his kingdom, love for his people. Don't forget, the sheep are not yours. They are his. So you are a custodian. When you do it right, you reward you. Number four, the reward may not come monetarily alone. God reward the minister not just monetarily. God reward the minister in diverse manner. So expect your reward in diverse manner. 
from the law. When he said he will give his angel charge over him, that they will not dash their feet to the stone. Now he's talking about his ministers, people that stay in his presence, ministry from his presence. So God does a lot of things for us, but when we don't see it in the form of cash, we thought that God is not rewarding us. Maybe because some of you have not been going to the hospital to pray for people. You don't appreciate the God. God is rewarding you. I saw somebody, they sent me something this morning. I, I saw an auntie that is dead. I said, oh God, the Resurrection Parish. That person um, is one of the old members of the Resurrection Parish. They sent me, they said, uh, she, she died. And I do the burial next month. I said, oh God. Oh. And when you hear what happened to some of these people, some of you have gone through it and you survive it. We survive it. God is not unjust. God is not unfaithful. God will always reward our labors of love. And He will reward, of, reward us in diverse manner. Can be in safety, can be in revelation, it can be in good health, can be in sound mind, it can be. It, you see, don't, don't boss God, don't bottle God in that. Your reward must come cash. Because let me tell you, you may have a bill of one million. God may not put the cash in your hand, but he will pay the bills. Has he not rewarded you? Yeah. But some of you, you want the money to... You, you, you just want to say that you too, you... But what, what is your problem? You have a need. It's like Elijah asking God during the uh, inflation, uh, scarcity, that God, give me money to buy food. God knows that his problem is not money at that time. His problem is food. Do you know that he knows your need? So, what God promised to meet is your need, not your want. Ministers, God will meet our needs, not our wants. God will meet our needs, not our luxury. Because we did dream a lot. Ah, I wish I wish that car is my car. I wish that car is my car. And God gave you one car. And he said, if it's not that one, God has not done it. What God will meet is not your want, it's your needs. So if it doesn't come in form of the way you want it, know that it's God is it behind, behind it. Somebody called me and said, I want to, I mean, can you send me the account number of your children's school? Or school, uh, school, I want to pay. How much is that school? Business? So you're not angry that they didn't give you the money to go and pay. Like, but what is your problem? I, I, I don't know whether you're getting it. But do they think I will not pay it? Do they think that they gave me? See, you know that some people, they don't carry their brain away a long time ago. Because what is your problem? You have a need. God met your need. And you are still angry that they didn't put it in your heart. God knows your heart. He knows that you will, you will take out of it. Uh, you may pay 70%, you will pay 30%. Praise God. Now, everything I've been saying is number one. So number two. God rewards us with the promise of rest. Rest. Now, this rest is both in time and in eternity. People that are serving God as a privilege, as an advantage over others. And the advantage is advantage of rest. That I won't lie to the people of God. Don't ever negotiate God's rest with anything. It's a reward. Not everybody has the peace of mind. Many times they see us having challenges, they don't see it on their face. And they wonder how these people coping. Some of you have a little problem, you show your face. And people start to say, What is wrong? And if they are not looking around, they won't ask you what is wrong. You tell someone that is looking around before they say, What is wrong? See, God, because we are joint ears with him. So because we have we been. We have been born with a price. So now, whatever whatever God has, we have. Nothing troubles him. Oh. Go and read Psalm 46. Let the whole earth enter into the ocean. There is a river of joy that flows through the city of God. 
forever. Ah, there is a river of joy that flows through the city of God. Be still and know that I am the Lord. Although the mountains may tumble, there is a river of joy. I, I stand as with my choir team, 1996. I still remember. You know, it's, we, sang, we sang the whole of uh, Psalm 46. The very present help in time of trouble. You don't talk about trouble may come everywhere. So number one thing God promised you, if you don't have this, please, your reward is far. Because God reward number one with rest. Rest in time and rest in eternity. Let's look at, let's look at um, the book of Hebrew chapter 4 verse 9. No, the book of or the old book of Hebrew chapter 4 is all we know very well. The Bible said that do you know that unbelief is very terrible for any minister that anybody that God is investing in? He said, you know, you need to be careful. He said, some people didn't enter because of unbelief. You know, he said, God has let's do verse 9. Somebody read for me verse 9. Hebrew yeah. chapter 4. There are there are many, so anybody that has known God that is serving God, you have a rest in God. There are many, a rest. may you enter into your rest. Amen. Marital rest, Amen. rest over your children, Amen. rest over your head, Amen. rest over your finances. Amen. Minister, God does reward with Allah of you, Over your children, you are not running. Do you know any men that run at a scatter? I told you about a, a, a woman that died going to going to help her daughter and her husband settle problem. Two poles, two poles to the house. She 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 she, she stumbled, she fell, and she died there. And those couple are sitting together. Even with their own and no problem, they are sitting together. Listen to me. God will give you rest. Amen. You won't die for anybody to live. Amen. If there is a promise of rest. And that rest is not. Now, let's look at Matthew chapter 28. Matthew 28. I think verse, verse, verse 20, 29. Or there about. Anybody there? Matthew 28. Eh, Matthew. 2020, eh? Tabi. No, where they said, um, come unto me. 11 to 10, so Matthew 11. And where he said that, come unto me, all you that labor and every day, and I'll give you rest. 11 28. Okay, I got it. 11 28. Can you read for me? Matthew 11. Come unto me. All ye. All ye. That labor and are heavily laden, and I'll give you rest. Can you see? So, God first promised rest in time. You are trouble in every area. He said, Come, I'll give you rest. Then, after that rest on earth here, He said, You will have rest eternally. So, get ready for God. Well, some of you, when we talk about reward, your, your eyes are already talking and calculating. Maybe Pastor is going to talk about God will reward me with your car before 21 days. Because some of you say that, ah, listen to me. <laughs> those, are, those are not the real rest. The real, the, real, the, real, the real reward, those are not the real reward. The real reward is number one, having rest. Nothing troubles you. There is a popular song that says, Peace, when trouble blows, Jehovah sees, Jehovah knows, is my peace. When trouble blows, Jehovah see, Jehovah is. So it doesn't matter what happened. Peace. Everything Jesus always tells people when they have problem come to him, he will say, Peace. When they are in the midst of the storm and they are trouble, what did he say? Peace. May you have that peace. Amen. Number two. Number what now? Number three is inheritance, both in time. And in eternity. At the time when Jesus Christ was preaching to people, and it was hard on them. I know Peter. That's why I told you. I said Jesus now to manage all the disciples. Peter was a sanguine. He was asking himself, say, with all this man of God is saying, let us know our faith too. Oga, we have left everything to follow you. What is the need for us? What did he tell them? He said, on this earth, you will have. Uh -uh. You forgot it. You have what? 
houses, all those things. And they said, after a year, so God promised you great things. So don't say because you are serving God, that's why your life is bad. Because some of you say that my life would have been good. Even though that I give my life to just God, God called me. It is the calling that has limited me. Calling doesn't limit anybody. I have no time. I will have to read the book of um, is it Luke chapter 9 now. So um, I'm just on one. Can we let's let's look at um, Luke chapter nine? Um, is it nine? I, I want to look at where he promised them. Where he promised them um, is the way he said, carry your cross and um, is it looks after another level? Someone let me look, let me look for it. <coughs> eh? Okay, look at that 23. Okay. Eh? Is it not? Let's read that one first. Yes. Okay. Then is there? Uh, I know that one is in Luke chapter nine. But we are Paul. Where the, the Peter was asking him and said that um, we have been following you. What will be our reward? I want you to read it. I thought I wrote it down, but it has escaped my my mind. <clears throat> Mark Mark ten twenty Mark ten what twenty eight Okay I know it's another other um gospel too eh Matthew yes Matthew nineteen yes is it Matthew nineteen so let's look at it from Matthew 19. It's Matthew 19, I'm looking for. Uh, Matthew chapter 19. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's read it. That's what it is. I've seen it. Yes, let's read it. That's what I'm looking for. Verse 28. Somebody can read for us. Yeah. Yeah. No, he didn't. Uh, he didn't read it from where. It was Jesus' reply was was a answer to question. Uh, he said, "We are forsaking all." Can you see that? I'll follow thee. What shall we? What is our reward? You can be. Seen, can you see? What is our reward? Because of everything that asking Jesus Christ question will make you to look so foolish. So Jesus had different different temperament among the disciples. The one that asked. Uh, reasonable question and what does ask reasonable question he 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 entertain all of them do you know that jesus never pushed anybody away i don't want so but this one question you expect that jesus Christ will have rebuked him because he has been talking about serious thing before now but why is it <laughs> so so what matter to peter is a uh, okay okay thank you for everything you have been saying what is our reward for following you so look at what is now saying verse 28 jesus Christ now said that that ye which are follow me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of glory, you also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging Israel. Now, can you not see? So he's talking about eternal, eternally, you are secure. You're, that one is said that when you are born again and you are serving him, your seat eternally is secure. But he now said, everyone that are forsaken houses, brethren, sister, or father, or mother, and wife, or children, or life for my name's sake, shall receive what? I shall inherit. It is what I'm saying here. So get prepared. God does not say because you serve him, he must deny you the good things of this life. Believe you me, you just follow him, not for things, but for who he is. You know what I'm saying? Seek first the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness. He said, all other things shall be... But the problem is, what's supposed to be following us is what we are now seeking. Cars, houses, we are not supposed to seek all those things. All those things are supposed to be following us. They are an addition. Let me give us one or two points, but then we'll, we'll be done for today. We can we'll continue next week. Number what now? Number four. Now, the reward will be according to the work that is done. The reward, you see, God will reward you based upon your work, based upon how He has graced you and what you do with it, based upon the talent He has given you and what you do with that talent. So it's not going to be that because we attend the same church, we are in the same choir together. God knows how many people are in the choir that are not following Him, that are not serving Him. God knows those people that are in the church that are not following Him. So you may be in the choir together, your reward may not be the same. For the fact that you are ministered together does not mean that your reward is going to be the same. Because the Bible says that through him, all actions are weighed. Because the Lord searches the heart, man searches the outside. God searches the heart. So let's read Matthew 16 27. Anybody can read for me. Yeah. So it's according to the work, and that work is determined by God. Because if you look at your Bible very well, it says something we call work. He said they are woods. He said what he call works, they are gold. So most of what we are doing now, it will be tested by fire. So what is that saying that according to the work will not mean that according to the one that will survive the fire? Every work that we do. That will not survive fire will not have reward. Every work you do, you have done in envy, pride, jealousy, showing forth, want to prove a point, want to tell them, I too, I can do it. The Bible says that they shall be burned by fire. But those ones that are gold, they will be refined. So God watches and measures our works. And he said he's going to reward us according to our word. So not all words will be rewarded. Only the one that the master said has, gone, has survived the, the fire. Because he said on those days, somebody will say, Master, Master, in your name, we cast out demons. In your name, we, in your name, we will give gifts out. You know what he said? He said to them, He said, I know you not. You are working, but you are workers of. And I've told you what is iniquity. Iniquity is sin that is not yet committed physically, but has been conceived in the earth. That was perfect from the day you are created until iniquity is found. So iniquity is not something that is outside. That's why God will not judge us only based on what we do physically. He judges us based upon the conditions of our heart. Ministers, God will judge you based upon the conditions of your heart. He said their words were rejected because they are workers of iniquity. So that means iniquity is attached to all their labors. Can you see that is a serious thing? So look at all our labors. Waking up early, going back late, serving God, serving people. What should be our uh, it's response to us on the last day? It's supposed to be welcome, ye faithful. But so not all workers are faithful workers. That's what we established when we started. It, it's because a faithful work must be the one that is done in love, that is done to the saint, that is done for the love of God, love of his kingdom, love of his people. May we not labor in vain. May our work not be, as, not be born by fire. May all our labor survive eternally. Shall we bow down our head? Father, let my work survive. Let my work survive, Lord. Let's say that our work will survive. I've been singing this song since I woke up this morning. Oh, my Lord, 
of your way in my life every day there is no peace there is no rest until you Lord have your way i place my life in your hands where secure in your hands oh my lord oh my lord i place my labors in your hands where secure in your hands oh my lord oh my lord Father, we place our lives in your hand. All our labors is in your hand. Come and have your way, Lord. Don't let us suffer losses. Both in time and in eternity, we receive our rewards. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray.